today I'm going to be taking you through how to identify these mermaid purses or egg cases. And these have been laid by sharks and skates and the egg cases wash up on the shore. Often we find them in the strand line and we will have a separate video about items you find in strand line so do check out that video as well. These dried up cases often get mistaken for dried up pieces of seaweed so you need a keen eye to be able to spot them on the coast. Here you can see I have three different egg cases and they all vary slightly in appearance but to be able to identify them correctly they need to be rehydrated. When they dry out like this they actually shrink in size so that means we won't be able to measure them correctly. All we need to do is add them to a bowl of tap water for at least two hours. If you can do this overnight then they'll be ready to ID in the morning. Here's my bowl of water and all we're going to do is add these to it. And I'll come back to these in a couple of hours. To identify our egg cases I'm going to be using this key that I've downloaded from the Shark Trust website. It's free to download and they have loads of resources on there so do check it out. They also have an app that you can download onto your phone and ID your egg cases on the go. Let's get started. So here are the egg cases, they've now been in the water for a little over two hours and you can see that they're much more flexible now and this has definitely increased in size. First observations, we can see they vary in shape. Now this egg case is most likely to be laid by a shark species. It's long and thin, just like the shape of a shark. Whereas these egg cases are a bit wider and if you imagine a skate with um, their wings, they need to be able to fit into this egg case and their wings wrap around slightly but they just need it to be a bit more broad. So that's already a little indication of what we might be looking at. When using the key the questions are split into sections to help us to identify our egg cases. First of all it's looking at the shape. So are our egg cases long and thin with tendrils or more wide and have the horns if they're still attached? So I've laid them out here for us to have a look at um, and as we mentioned before we can see these ones are much more narrower than they are wide whereas these two are a bit wider. So we're going to focus on these. Sometimes you'll find them in a cluster like this, they're laid together and the tendrils hold them together and to the seabed but some do break away. So we'll just focus on this one to make it easier. Section 2 asks us about the length of our egg case. So we need to measure them and we actually measure just the length here and this is known as the capsule, not the tendrils, just the body of it, the capsule. And this one measures roughly 5 centimetres. So 2A asks for an egg case 8 to 10 centimetres long and 2B asks for an egg case 5 to 7 centimetres. So that's where our egg case sits. So this means it's a sport, small spotted cat shark also known as a lesser spotted dogfish. It's the same animal, just has two names. And just to show you a comparison, this is five centimeters, but I also have one here that's the same species. It's a little bit longer at the seven centimeter mark. We're going to move on now to this next egg case and it does have some damage. So we just need to keep that in mind when we're IDing. So if we follow section one, it's more square with horns, we then need to jump to question three. Question three asks us to look at the lateral keel. So the lateral keel is this edging here to the egg case. Imagine ravioli with the pinched edge. Is there a section that's pinched together? And this one does. So we can say yes, and that means we can jump to question four. It now asks us to measure the length of the capsule, so again that's just the middle section not including the horns. And this egg case measures roughly five and a half to six centimetres. It asks if it's greater than 13, which it isn't. This one is less than 13, so now we can jump to six. Section six is asking us about the appearance of the egg case. So if I hold this up, you can see there's kind of some striations to the case, but it's very smooth when you feel it. 
This section asks whether the body has a washboard texture, which it doesn't. So on here, again, it asks a body is smooth and has striations. So we can jump to seven. Section seven is asking us to look at the shape of the egg case a bit more closely. So it's asking whether the egg case is um, tapers towards the bottom or is quite even in shape. And ours is quite even, it's quite straight down each side. It doesn't become narrower at one end than the other. That means we can go on to question eight. Section eight is looking at the length of the capsule again. So I've just popped it back on its ruler and it's about six centimeters, not including the horns. And if we look at our options, 8A is between 10 and 12 centimeters, which it isn't, and 8B is between six and seven. Therefore, it's a thornback ray. So now we're gonna do our last egg case um, and our largest egg case as well. So I've already done section one. We know it's not long and thin like the cat shark. It's much more broad. And that means we go to question three. And this asks us about that lateral keel. So the pinched edge down the outside. It does have some kind of extra bits on this side, but it doesn't have the keel going all the way down. So I'm gonna say no for that one. And we're gonna jump to question nine. It now wants to know the length of our egg case. So I've set it up with our ruler and it's roughly seven to eight centimeters long. So much larger than our previous ones. 9A asks for a capsule length of five to six, which it isn't, it's much larger than that. So we jump to 9B and it asks upper and lower horns are approximately equal in length. Now this is our only option. So we will move on to question 10, but just to show you, we have the two um, horns at the top here. They are equal length, but we've lost the bottom two, but hopefully we'll still be able to work out this species. So section 10 asks for a egg case with a capsule length of seven to eight centimeters. And it says some small fringes may be present along the margins with additional fibers often present. If you look at the diagram here, you can see it should have these extra um, fringes and this might be what I was talking about here it looks like there would have been something joined on there but before we decide it is 10a 10b which is our last option um, is a capsule length between five and six which this one is definitely larger than so I do think we can be confident in saying that this egg case is an undulate ray so we had three different species, our undulate ray, thornback ray, and small spotted cat shark. What I'm going to do now is submit my findings to the Shark Trust website. This helps scientists understand the presence and diversity of species of skates and sharks all around the UK coastline. Next time you're at the beach, have a look out for these and try and identify them yourself. Don't worry if you're not 100% confident in identifying them. Every submission to the Shark Trust website is verified and we only learn by getting involved. Do check out the Shark Trust website. It's full of lots of information about our native species and resources like these posters. I hope you found this video useful for identifying mermaids, purses and egg cases that you find in the future.